Welcome back everyone. In the last video we learned how to make a simple lightsaber. It worked well enough, the blade glows and it does turn on and off when you pull the trigger, but it still doesn't feel quite right. Almost seems more like a flashlight than a lightsaber. So let's give it a bit more life by adding some sound effects and adding an animation for the blade growing out of the hilt. Going from this... to this. We'll also add some parameters that make it easy to change the speed and length of the blade on the fly. You know, just in case you ever wanted to... Let's get started. Here we are, right where we left off in the last tutorial. First thing we're going to do is go back into our BP Saber that we made before by going ahead and double clicking that. And then go to the event graph. Now, this part we made here under Event Trigger Pressed, that flip-flop between making the blade visible or not, we don't actually need anymore, since that's not how we're going to be turning the lightsaber on. The blade will always be visible now, it's just going to shrink instead of disappearing. So you can go ahead and delete these three nodes here. Instead, we're going to make a few variables and put those in this space. So go to the lower left here where it says Variables, and hit the plus icon to add a new one. We'll name this blade speed. So it's just a number that says how fast the blade is going to grow in and out. Once you've named it, go over to the right and find this drop down menu that says variable type, and we're going to change it to a float, which is just a number that can have decimal points in it. Now, before you can set the value of this, you have to go up here and hit compile, and now you see the text box shows up. So we'll just change the default value to something like 5. Now we still need to add two more of these, so do the same thing again. Go down here to variables, add, and this one will be max blade length. Which, as you could probably guess, is just how long the blade is when it's fully extended. We'll make this one a float as well. Compile, and set the default to about 1.3. And last one now, add another variable. This one is going to be target blade length. This isn't quite the same as the max blade length, and we'll see why in just a minute here. We'll set it to a float and hit compile, but it doesn't really matter what the default value is because the script is going to be changing that for us, so you can just leave it at zero. And one last thing before we're done setting these up, if you go down to your variable list here, you'll notice this little icon next to them. Click on these for both your blade speed and your max blade length, and it'll look like a little eye opened up next to them. All this does is it allows us to edit these variables from outside the blueprint. So you can place like five lightsabers with every one of them having different values by changing them right there in the map editor. Anyway, now that we have these variables, let's actually put them to some use. So go back to event trigger pressed here that controlled your blade visibility. Drag off of A on the flip-flop, and we're going to grab our target blade length that we just made. And then you want to drag off of its value here. And we're going to set it to the max blade length. Then you drag off of B, get the target blade length again. But this time we're just going to leave it at zero. So the target length is where the blade is trying to be. So when it flops to A, it's trying to work its way up to the max blade length because that's the target. And then when it flops to B, it tries to move its way back down to zero. So now the saber always knows what size it wants to be, it just doesn't know how to get there yet. Which is where our real lesson here is going to start. So let's go set that up. Go up towards the top of the graph and you'll see this node called Event Tick. Unlike other events, which are triggered by something specific, this one just runs constantly. If you put something here, then every moment the game is open, it'll do that action on repeat, which is exactly what we want. So drag off of the white arrow here and look for set world scale 3D. You'll see a few options show up, but we're going to pick the one with our child actor, which, if you remember, is the blank object that our saber blade is attached to. This node is going to control the scale of that object. You're probably going to want to drag it pretty far away because we're going to be putting a lot of stuff in between here. 
Now we really only need to affect the Z scale, the X and Y don't need to change. So to control each one separately, you can right click the scale option here and hit split struct pin, which is going to split that one yellow arrow into three green ones. By the way, you're probably going to want to move these boxes up a bit so you have more room to work underneath them. We're going to be putting a lot of stuff in this space. First off, we need to set the X and Y, and since we don't want them to change, we just have to figure out what they are right now and tell them to stay that way. So right click a space down here and look for get world scale. And we'll pick our child actor again. Similar to how you did up here, just right click the return value, hit split struct pin, and it splits it into three. So now you can just drag the X to the X and the Y to the Y looks at the child actor, sees what the scale is, tells it to stay that way. Pretty simple so far. And now we need to figure out the Z, which is where things get a little bit messier, but it's still not too complicated. Just right click an empty space again, and this time we're going to look for a node called finterp2. All this node does is smoothly move from one number to another. So let's plug in its values here, going one at a time. For current, we hook in the Z of this get world scale down here. For the target, we're going to drag off and get our target blade length that we made. The delta time hooks into the delta seconds of the event tick. And for the interp speed, we'll drag off and get our blade speed. So you take the result of all this and plug the return value into the z of the set world scale over here. So this just looks at what the length is right now, which is the Z down here. Then it looks at where it wants to be, which is the target blade length. And it slowly moves from one to the other. And how fast it does this is based on the blade speed. Now if you want to tidy this up a bit so it looks like less of a tangled mess, you can go ahead and do that. And while we're on that topic, if you double click anywhere on one of these lines, it adds another point to move it from. Just to help keep things a bit more tidy. Now we're pretty much done here. All we have to do before testing it is to hop over to the viewport tab real quick and make those things we hid last time visible again. So go to your cylinder and your point light. You can select both at the same time by holding control. And look for the rendering tab here and make sure they're both visible. Now we'll hit compile and save. And when we go back to test it, our animation should be working now. And now we got the animation working. But you may have noticed a slight problem with this, and that is that the light is always on, which looks really weird when it's closed up in the handle like that. Fortunately, this is a really easy fix. We're just going to control the brightness of the blade in the exact same way we changed the length. So go back to BP Saber in the event graph here, and go back down to our trigger pressed event. And we're going to need one more variable, so go down here, hit the plus, and we'll call this one Blade Glow. Make it a float, just like the other ones. Hit Compile, and we'll leave the default value at 0 since it starts turned off. So right here, at the part that's at the blade length, we're just going to drag off and grab that new blade glow variable. And we'll set the brightness to something really high, like 5000. Then drag off the one on the B side as well. Get the blade glow again. And this time we just set it to 0. So when the saber's on, it's 5,000. When it's off, it's 0. But again, these are just where the numbers want to be. They don't actually know how to get there yet. So we'll go back up to our event tick. And we're going to do the same thing to the light that we did to the scale here. So drag off the set world scale 3D here. And we're going to set intensity of our point light. Move this over. And for the value, we're going to drag off and get F in terp 2 again. That's just a matter of filling out the boxes. So for current, we need to figure out what the current intensity of our point light here is. So just drag off of the point light and look for get intensity. And we'll plug that in right here. The target, which is where it wants to be, is just going to be our blade glow we made a second ago. Delta time, once again, goes to the delta seconds in the event tick. So drag that all the way over here. And then the interp speed can just be our blade speed, just like it was for the scale. Now you can either drag off and get the blade speed again.
or you can get it by dragging all the way to the one we made over here. Whichever you feel looks cleaner. Now we'll just compile and save, and then hop back into our map and see how it works. So as you can see, the light is off, and when we turn it on, it slowly brightens up. So we're almost done here. All we have to do now is add some sound effects. We're going to need a place to put those sounds, so go ahead and right-click your content folder in the lower left, hit New Folder, and name it Sounds. Now there are tons of places where you can find lightsaber sound effects for free, so I'll leave that part up to you guys. You can even make your own if you really wanted to. <laughs> so stupid. Either way, make sure their file type is .wave and just drag them on over from whatever folder they're in, straight into our new sound folder in Unreal. So you're going to need two sounds, one for when the saber turns on, and one for when it turns off. Once you have them in your folder here, you're going to want to right click each one and look for this option called Create Queue. It should be up towards the top of the list. It'll make another file with the same name as your sound, except it has an underscore Q on the end of it. Do that for both the open and close sound effects. So now we have open Q and close Q. Now we can run back to our Blueprints folder and open up VP Saber again. All we have to do to add the sounds is go down to the bottom of the graph at our event trigger pressed, drag off the blade glow here on the A side, and look for spawn sound attached. It's got two inputs, one for the sound, which is our open cue, and then one for the thing it's attached to, which will be the static mesh of our lightsaber. So drag off, look for get static mesh component, and then we're going to do the same thing down on the B side, so drag off of this, spawn sound attached, for the sound we'll do the close cue this time, and for the attachment we'll just plug it into the same node as the other one. Now let's just compile and save one more time, and then hop over to our game and see if it works. And now... We have a fully working lightsaber. Well, I hope this video helped at least a few of you out there. As always, I'm open to feedback if you think there's anything I can improve on, and if you have any questions or are confused on a certain part, just let me know below. I always try to read and respond to each comment as best I can. Till next time.